everybody, welcome back. We're here at Nova Cat Clinic on this very, very cold day. And my name's Dr. Erica Barron. This is Ellen Carroza, our head LVT here, also known as the Cat LVT. And today, since Dental Health Month starts on Friday, um, Dental Health Month every year is in February, even though every month is important for cats mm -hmm. and dogs and people, dental health, um, we thought we would talk about dental health. Yep, sounds good. Um, it's actually one of the most important things um, that you can do preventively for your pet mm -hmm. is keep their teeth cleaned. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually one of the most popular procedures that we do here at Nova Cat Clinic. We do anywhere from two to three cats per day, five days a week, keeping their teeth clean and healthy. Yes, it is important because we want to make sure that whatever disease process is happening mm -hmm. in the ear doesn't spread to the rest of the body. Right. And also, cats are one of the few species that can decide to stop eating until they, we can't get them back. And one of the things that can cause that is if they have significant dental disease. So we try not to let that happen. Yep, and usually people are actually really surprised when they come in to see you guys for um, <laughs> that exam. When you say, oh my goodness, your cat really does need to have their teeth cleaned. Look how painful this mouth is. And they always say, well, sometimes I don't even notice my cat's in pain because they're so good at hiding pain. Um, so when you come in and see your veterinarian and they do that um, oral exam as part of the full physical exam on the pet, sometimes it can be rather surprising when they have you schedule your dental cleaning and compared to what they think they see in the mouth, sometimes it can be rather surprising what actually is really going on in the mouth. It can be a great, easy, routine cleaning, we're gonna have a happy mouth, or the teeth look perfectly normal when you guys are actually visualizing them. And then on x-ray, we got a problem. Right, because if you see this, it's the same with our teeth. You can only see 50% of the teeth over the gum. 50% is under the gum. Um, I know this model's a little old, but seriously, the canine is actually this big. Mm -hmm. It's huge, but I can only see half of it. So if there's a hole up here, I can't see it. So that's why you have to take x-rays and they're very, very important for cats. Yep, and it's actually one of the things that's required when we do dentistry here. That is a <laughs> no-go situation um, if you do not want to have um, a dentistry done with x-rays here at the clinic, then we usually do not <laughs> perform yeah. the procedure here. That's part of um, us making sure that we are practicing the highest quality of medicine possible and that your cat is actually having their medical needs addressed. Um, again, we can't you know, reiterate enough that we see so much dental disease under the gum line for cats, and they can have a perfectly normal looking mouth, but those x-rays indicate that you know, most of the teeth are breaking down. So it is a big problem. And it's a painful process. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have been very lucky that I haven't personally had a lot of dental issues myself, mm -hmm. but I could only imagine how an abscess tooth or if yeah. your tooth is resorbing and how much pain that would be every time you bit down on something. Even that, even with people who get uh, root canals or crowns and stuff, they'll tell you just how horrible <laughs> the pain is um, as, as far as dental pain goes. I mean, it's full of nerve endings and you have these crazy big nerves that are running along in your mouth and along with your teeth that how could they not be in pain, but cats are just so stoic and they barely chew their food as it is, so everything's just gonna go down whole. So you don't really see a lot until your veterinarian addresses the issue with you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, one of their biggest concerns is if we have extractions done or mm -hmm. we're talking about doing extractions is, is my cat still going to eat food? And Ellen hit on it. A lot of cats, they will wake up from anesthesia, they will have all their teeth removed and they will eat hard food. And yeah. I don't understand it, but they do it anyway. Um, I don't think I would do that if I were a cat. I think I would want to eat wet food, mm -hmm. but I'm not a cat, um, and they still eat it. So usually it's not a problem. Uh, once in a while for cats that have like full mouth extractions mm -hmm. or something like that, we'll think about putting in a feeding tube just to help them until their pain from extractions has diminished. Yep. And then once that's over, we'll pull the tube and they're fine. A lot of times we sort of put the tube in as sort of like an insurance policy because we don't want the cat to stop eating, but they usually eat anyway and we usually don't do it. We just want to make sure we're avoiding any pitfalls from mm -hmm. the get-go. So Ellen, since Ellen is so great at dentistry, I was going to have her talk to you about x-rays a little bit more. So this is our x-ray machine. 
Right. And this is why there's a lot of reasons cats have to be put under general anesthesia yeah. when we do dentals, but this is one of the main reasons because this little piece right here, I don't remember how much it is. It's very expensive. <laughs> it's a lot. I think it's it costs expensive. as much as my car. It's very expensive. <laughs> we do not want them to bite it. No, no. We do not want them to bite it. So this plate actually has to go in the mouth in various directions that we actually have to kind of sit it in there. And then we come at an angle, depending upon which teeth we're going to take an x-ray of, to actually visualize up on our screen there. I don't know if you can see it. It's big. <laughs> on um, what teeth we're actually looking at. But the last thing you want to do is have an animal bite down on this piece of equipment because it is digital and once it's ruined, that's it. We have to get a new one. But you also want the animal to stay still. You can't ask your cat to hold still and you run behind the little one's curtain like at, the, at our dentist's office, you know, and you think they stay still. Um, the cats don't do that. No. <laughs> so we want, to, listen to us we want them to be asleep for it because we do have to manipulate the head in different directions and the body in different directions so we can make sure we get uh, the best visualization possible of these teeth on x-ray. Um, but this is the first part of the oral um, exam that we do when they are asleep. We go ahead and we take the x-rays, the doctor assesses what's going on, and then we continue with that oral exam by looking under the tongue, in the back of the throat, we probe the teeth, we check for pockets, we check for lesions, and then we actually start the actual procedure for cleaning. But your pet is under full anesthesia when they have their dental cleaning performed. Um, the other reason we want them under general anesthesia, besides that we don't want them to bite this, is we don't want them to bite us mm -hmm. or themselves because the cat's mouth is one of the most bacteria-ridden, dangerous parts of the body. It's also one of the no-no spots. It's, it's the front end and the back end yes. under no-no spot. Which and that's their personal space. That's, yeah. a, that's a lot to ask of them to yes. get in their face. Yes. So if you've ever heard of someone getting bit by a cat who's been in the hospital for three days or four days and it's septic and has to have like their hand flushed and drains put in and all this stuff, that's real. We don't want them to bite their tongue off and do that to themselves or bite us, and that's you know one of the other reasons. And because I mean we can be extremely thorough. You know, um, some people talk about anesthesia-free dentistry. We're not going to talk about it. We don't think it's a good idea for cats. That's probably um, the worst idea ever. Um, you have a lot of people that come up to it and they they do the excuse of well I can't afford a real dental cleaning, which you can't afford a real dental cleaning. So does that make anesthesia-free dentistry a real dental cleaning? No, you're just scraping off the plaque of tartar there. You're not polishing the teeth afterwards. You're not doing um, x-rays on them. So you really don't know what's going on. You're just cleaning the crown. So for all you know, all the disease could be underneath that gum line and you're just cleaning the schmutz off the crown and you're not doing much at all. Plus you're actually creating more unnecessary stress for the cat. Mm -hmm. The other problem I have with those is if there's a big piece of calculus and you get under that piece of calculus and there's a hole there, yep. you've just made it worse. Mm -hmm. Because at least with the calculus, it was protecting that hole so it wasn't causing the cat as much pain and it wasn't like a direct shot to the outside world to get more bacteria. Yep. I mean, it's not good that there's a hole there in the first place, but at least it's covered. Um, so to me, that's always what I worry about. And then also like, if the cat gets like you know upset and something gets goes the wrong way because accidents happen yeah. and it's it's just better for the patient if it's mm -hmm. not an anesthesia free thing for cats That's the worst thing feel. in the world that we get is when we are presented with an animal that had anesthesia free dentistry or dentistry done elsewhere on the cheap and then they come to us and we have to fix the problem um, that's the worst Especially feeling Especially if they in the world. don't have x-rays and um, a lot of roots are left and they have to go hunting. Yep, you can't leave roots behind in a cat because that actually can cause further problems. Especially if the roots aren't what's called ankylosed when they actually start turning into bone. Um, if they leave the actual roots in there that still actually have a pulp cavity that's viable, that can potentially be a big problem, especially cats with stomatitis. When you actually yeah. want to make sure that the entire tooth and root is removed. Stomatitis is inflammation of the mouth, and some cats have this terribly to the point where their gums and everything start mm -hmm. attacking their teeth. It's very, very painful. I've seen a few cats' kids asleep because they can't, they just stop eating and their pain can't be managed. 
And one of the things we do to help this when they're young, if we catch it when they're young, is we'll remove all their teeth. Sometimes when they're older, even if we remove all their teeth, that inflammation is just too much and, and we can't do things to help them and it's really sad. Right, just like one of our latest house cats, um, Tigress, um, actually had to have all of her teeth removed and we actually sent her to the dentist thinking the first time around we were gonna get this problem fixed and her stomatitis was so bad that they actually sent her back to us the same day and we actually had to starve this poor cat on steroids and heavy duty antibiotics to get that inflammation down so the dentist could actually work in her mouth. That's how bad some of these can, can be. Ultimately, we did manage to get her to the dentist. She did have her extractions done. She did fantastic. She was eating the same day and she got home as of yesterday. She didn't go to the doctor. Yeah, we're gonna miss her. Sarah, is there a question? Yes, two things. One, we have a hello from Francis's mom. Bye, Amber. <laughs> Hi, Amber. I miss you. And also, we have a question. Um, my four-year-old cat has gingivitis on one side of his mouth. My vet recommended Greenies dental treats. However, it's not going away. Do you recommend I start brushing his teeth? That's from Maddie Reynolds. You can start brushing the teeth, but if there's already gingivitis, I would do a dental and then brush. Right. You don't know the recovery. severity of that gingivitis mm -hmm. that's there. Gingivitis it comes in grades, just as periodontal disease comes in grades. So once you hit past stage one gingivitis, which is the mildest form of gingivitis, um, that's something you can keep under control. You'll never fully cure it. It's like in people. You can keep those disease processes under control, but the only thing that you're really going to be able to do is get a professional cleaning done and make sure that there's something not happening up underneath the gum line that's causing that one-sided gingivitis that your veterinarian is seeing. No, that's good. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, great. So then your cat's under anesthesia. We did x-rays. Um, the next thing we'll do is we intubate them. Um, and then Ellen does a great job of scaling and polishing. And this is the same process that happens when you and I go to the dentist. Yep. They scale and polish our teeth. Yep. And they make me feel wonderful. Yep, and then we also have to chart the teeth. Every single tooth gets charted if there's a problem with the tooth, if it looks normal, if there's teeth that we need to keep an eye on in the future, etc. Um, each tooth has its own comprehensive physical exam. One of the doctors I used to look at said every single pet has a bunch of extra little patients in its mouth and each tooth is its own patient yep. and you have to pay attention to all of them. Yep. Even those little incisors. Yep, uh, absolutely. Um, and, the, and the incisors are actually really important in cats. They're, they're, they're little personal combs. They actually use them for grooming. And if you see cats that have severe stomatitis, some of these cats don't want to groom because their teeth are so inflamed that it hurts to even just clean themselves. Yeah. So then if the teeth have to be extracted, we do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we use uh, resorbable sutures. Yep. So the cats, when they come back for us to check, we don't have to actually like go in and cut out sutures. Nobody, I don't think any cat wants that when they're awake. That sounds like a really bad idea. And then we wake them up and they're excited to go home because they're on a lot of drugs <laughs> and they don't feel any pain. They're like, this is great. And then the real excitement begins when we tell you that we highly recommend you doing some sort of home dental care to which the client is either like, no problem, or you get the blank stare of like, you want me to what? Yes. So ideally, I would not start this the day of the dental. If you had extractions, I would probably wait at least two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's just me. Ideally, every cat should have his teeth brushed daily. Ideally. Ideally. I had a friend who had a Weimaraner, and her vet, when she first got her Weimaraner, told her that if she brushed her dog's teeth every day, he would never need a dental. And she brushed her dog's teeth every time she brushed her teeth. And her dog never needed a dental mm -hmm. for eight years. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, some, some animals job. you can easily train. And cats, you can actually train them to do um, you know, certain tasks. I had two personal cats of mine that had heart disease, and they could not be under anesthesia because it was still well over 10 years ago. Anesthesia wasn't the greatest mm -hmm. <laughs> back then um, either. Um, so a little bit more dangerous for cats with heart disease because they really didn't know a lot about treating heart disease um, as, it, as it was, but both of them had their teeth cleaned every single day. And I used, and they used to have these little little pads that look like Stridex pads for your cats now. Mm -hmm. And I would, you know, wipe their teeth down every single day. 
Now, neither one of them made it to actually needing to have um, their two professional teams that both passed away. But every time we did a physical exam on them, I got a thumbs up from the doctor saying, okay, it looks good. We're not in any serious problem that we need to go under anesthesia or even consider it. So now that, daily is Now that ideal. being said, we could not, like you didn't have x-rays done. So yeah. we would not necessarily know 100% what's going on in the mouth without doing x-rays. But you have to put the patient's needs first. Do I want to sedate a cat that has heart disease yeah. just to see if there might be dental disease? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Sarah, is there a question? Yeah, so on that topic, somebody asked if there was a toothpaste you recommended. There's an enzyme toothpaste, or do you recommend brushing without toothpaste? Great question. So what I always tell people, and again, this is what I tell people. I've never been able to do this to any of my cats. My cats would just be like, see you later, lady. Mm -hmm. They're not, um, they don't listen to me. <laughs> I truly am their staff. I'm not the owner. Um, we like some of these enzyme dent things and the enzyme toothpaste. What I always have told people is get them to lick it off your finger or use one of those finger toothbrushes. Mm -hmm. Get them to start just licking it because even the act of sort of getting it in there, there's an enzyme, hopefully it'll start breaking stuff down. Um, clearly never use a people product on them because we like to spit and cats don't know to spit that mm -hmm. stuff out so it's not made for them. So use a cat product. Um, some of them really like the poultry one, that they like poultry. Yeah. And there's a bunch of different brands out there. It's just finding the brand that your cat likes. Um, there's this, the popular CEP brand that a lot of people tend to use. They actually used to make these awesome little chews that looked like egg bowls that the cats used to go crazy over and they used to like them quite a bit. So there's different options as far as home dental care goes. So when your veterinarian actually calls you to let you know everything went great, we're gonna start discussing home dental care. What can you do and what can you not do are like the two biggest things that we need to know because the last thing we're gonna do is send you home with a product that you are not gonna use because when we see you six months from now to recheck that mouth to see how everything's going, we ask, you know, hey, how's it going with that product? And you can be like, yeah, I haven't even touched it. Yeah. Paid X amount of money for it, didn't even bother using it. So we need to know as far as um, your willingness to do home dental care for us to be actually be able to recommend the correct product. Right, so that's why for me, for people whose cats don't, I'm not gonna say don't listen to them, aren't compliant, are in charge, you know, you, you just sort of feed mm -hmm. them because that's what they let you do. They cuddle with you, but you have to feed them well. Um, I like perio powder a lot. I sort of shake it on like Parmesan cheese. I love this stuff. Um, I take the whole thing and dump it in an eight pound bag of food and let shit go all up and then it's all ready to go. I don't have to worry. Cool. So I don't have to remember to shake it on every oh, single that's day. A good idea. So I just take the whole thing and dump it in an eight and a half pound bag of cat food and I'm ready to go. So you can use things like perio powder. Um, some people really like this. Um, I call it maxi guard. Some people call it orzine. Um, and you just put like a dot on each side every day, not yeah. on the cheeks, like my cheeks in the mouth on the teeth. Um, and I feel like it's really made a difference for a lot of patients. Yeah, especially when they have gingivitis and underlying periodontal disease that need um, chronic help. And then the other thing is, is you can buy, if your cat doesn't have any other things going on, you could purchase some of the veterinary dental products yeah. like um, the TD diet, there's a Royal Canin product, there's probably a, a Purian product, I just don't know the name. Yep. Um, and then, you know, if you do use those, you just need to be careful because the calories are higher mm -hmm. because the tooth goes through the food, so it sort of helps clean the outside, but it is a high carby food, mm -hmm. so it has more calories. So if you're going to switch your cat primarily over to one of those, work with your veterinarian to see how much they should be eating because the last thing we would want is for your cat to get like super fat mm -hmm. because you switched the diet. And that's the same with greenies. A lot of people really like greenies. I think they might work. I don't think they hurt, but if you're going to start giving a lot of greenies or some of the other dental chews, you need to help cut back on, on the other calories somewhere else. Yep. Now you can also do a lot of other things like there's the dental treats. Um, one thing you want to do if you are purchasing products that are over the counter that are not veterinarian recommended, you want to make sure that the veterinarian or a health um, council actually has their seal of approval on it, which is B O H C, <laughs> um, which Greenies does. 
And cats love these, and sometimes cats love these so much they don't even chew them. They yeah. swallow them whole. Which sort of doesn't help the process. <laughs> they swallow them whole. So if you see your cat swallowing the dental treats whole, it's not doing maybe a job. job. <laughs> maybe you should try a different one that um, is more of the veterinary grade of using like a prescription diet such as TD. You only get you only could use a couple nuggets every single day, a four pound bag can last you several months, um, or using some of the other products and save these actually as treats. Now kittens do love these because they're big enough for the kittens to actually chew, but I can pretty much tell you that our house cats swallow these whole and they will eat the whole bag if they absolutely can, but if they threw it up, every single one of them would come out looking exactly like the shape that they're See, in. Clear. Clea does crunch on those. She likes to crunch. She's like, my cats hate these. Really? Mm -hmm. They will not go near them. Temptations, yes. And oh, now well, temptations Clea would rip made. Over that bag. <laughs> if temptations we were made, just talking a about how temptations yeah. should come out with a compounding pharmacy. They should. They should also come out with a food for cats that are in Africa. You just put that in the bag instead of having to crush them up and use them as sprinkles on yes. food sometimes for some cats. But you do want to look for the veterinary seal of approval on the over-the-counter products um, that you know have been uh, approved for use that they actually do the job that they're saying that they're doing. And um, I heard, I don't remember his name, he was at the University of Pennsylvania, he was like one of the past presidents of the DOHC, and he said, just because it has the stamp doesn't mean that it's going to necessarily solve the problem, but it should help it from not getting worse. Yep. And again, we're doing the, the whole population. Your cat's genes are not comparable to any other cat's genes. So, you know, my, my first cat, Lucy, he was, I think he was 17 or 18 when he passed. He had the most perfect set of teeth. Mm. It was amazing. Yeah. He never had any dental issues. Whereas there's other cats we see, it's like every six months, bam. And usually the fancier a cat is, the more often we have to see them for dentistry. But there's some, you know, cats you just get from wherever that need multiple, multiple extractions. We don't know if it's because they had something when they were. Hey, hey, hey. Um, we fine. don't know if, sorry, someone's <laughs> on me not doing the best for anybody. I, all I heard was, hey, hey, hey. Um, Oh, I'll go back to what I was saying. I am really a slide. So you're talking about the guy in the story about how. Um, oh, so we don't we don't know if it's because that kitten or that cat who's two or three that you get from the shelter that you know is just your run of the mill domestic short haired cat. If they had some type of virus when they were little and it impacted their dental health, and as a result. They have a lot of dental disease when they're older, or maybe they just had bad dental genes. <laughs> See, I stopped laughing. You guys have to stop I'm laughing. Sorry. Sarah's making me laugh. I know. I'm sorry. Are there any other questions, Sarah? Um, no, not yet. There are a couple about the food stuff, um, just different. Like uh, somebody, I think, asked if their cat has to be on a prescription diet and can't get the if they have crystals, what should they do? You should stay on their crystal diet. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And then, um, you know, you could, depending on what you and your vet talk about, maybe you could put in a couple TD things or something. But you got to talk to your vet about that because we don't want your cat to have any blockage ever. Now, going back to you were just talking about, like, uh, the different cats and their genes and everything like that. Dr. Wooten and I actually had a cat, like, last month that was in her 20s today, who was the first time having her teeth cleaned. And that cat mouse was like, maybe she was five, six years old. That's they amazing. were fantastic. And then, of course, the other day, I had a three-year-old under anesthesia for a dental procedure, and we took her x-rays, and we were like, this is awful, and we need to get you to the dentist. I mean, this poor cat needed to have uh, full mouth extractions done, um, and she already had advanced oral renal effusion. Anywhere from starting at a grade three to a grade five that everything was pretty much disappeared. But when we looked in her mouth, we're like, oh goodness, you know, we, we have a big time problem here. So it, it's very variable depending upon the cat. Yeah. You know, it does it, um, you know, is dental disease contributed to having chronic upper respiratory symptoms in cats like herpes? You know, those are things that they look at. Is it too much excessive vitamin D in the food, you know, versus, you know, just your genetics? And we know via genetics that actual lines get resorptive regions mm -hmm. as well. 
Oh, the, the vet I worked with in Columbus, he took out the canine of, um, was it a tiger or a lion? I think it was a tiger. It took him three hours. He got it all out in one piece. Was it like a sword by the time he was done? He had it in his office. It was huge. It was like half of, like it was, uh, I can't, it was so cool he got it out in one piece. Yeah. He was just like, I wasn't not going to get it out in one piece. And in my head I was like, I would have just called you. That's like, that's too much. Mm -hmm. Very cool. It was very cool. Um, another thing that a lot of people ask about um, feline dental disease is, is it better to eat hard food or wet food? What do you think, Ellen? I think it's important to feed your cat what your cat wants to eat. Um, that is my personal opinion. Um, they say that eating hard food prevents calculus buildup. But then again, they say eating wet food prevents that soft um, tartar and plaque buildup in the first place because we actually, the cat actually has the correct enzymes in its mouth to digest the wet food more properly than the dry food. See, and then you say that, but then all of the dental products that we recommend are hard. Are hard. So it's kind of, so to me, um, I think you should feed your cat Someone's making like dances out the window at us, sorry. <laughs> I think you should feed your cat, as Ellen said, what your cat wants, mm -hmm. but also it should be a good diet. Yep. Um, a lot of people who feed their pets raw food, mm -hmm. um, they don't have dental disease because they're feeding more um, a balanced, whatever, sometimes. Diet. Right, but that being said, it's not easy to feed your cat a raw food diet. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you should go feed your cat a raw food diet. I'm saying if you want to do a raw food diet, you should sit down with your veterinarian or someone who specializes in that mm -hmm. and then go from there because right. there's a lot of things that can go wrong and it can be very, very bad. It can be very good for an inflammatory reason, but it can be very, very bad if it goes wrong. Yep, absolutely. Do you have anything else you want to say about dental disease or February's Dental Health Month? <laughs> no, well, around here, we, we really don't celebrate Dental Health Month because we're actually, we promote it year-round. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how important that we feel that um, dental health care for your cat is. Uh, but do know that your pets are extraordinarily well taken care of while they are here. We do treat them like family. We do enjoy having them. We and, them a um, lot. It's actually quite enjoyable, I would say, like when I get a cat back a year or two later to have your teeth cleaned again and we can actually follow any kind of progressive disease or we can be like, your mouth still looks fantastic from the last time you're doing a great job. You know, our goal is to make sure that your cat is happy and healthy and they have more birthdays so they can come back and see the veterinarians over and over again so you guys have a very long lasting relationship. Mm -hmm. Yep, I couldn't have said it better myself. Sarah, are there any other questions? Um, no, I think we're all good. All right, well, thanks for sharing this time with us, everyone. And if you have anything you want us to talk about, we did one last week, we did one this week, we make no promises for next week, but we're trying to get in the habit of doing Yes, yeah, so let us know weeks. what topics you guys want to hear about so we don't wind up talking about the same things over and over again that we feel that is important for you guys to keep on knowing. Right. Thank you. Have a great day.